Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. We've got a bit of an overcast wintry day today, but winter is the key word in that sentence. Today we're talking about winter hiking skills. So I want to jump straight in, but I want to start by saying what I'm not going to be talking about today is any conditions where you're out and about and potentially you need a crampon uh, or crampons, not just one because that wouldn't be very helpful, a crampons or an ice axe. So basically if you're in the mountains, if there's snow on the ground, uh, obviously those are kind of your traditional winter conditions but I want to talk about some different tips and advice that I put together for those of us who just want to get out and about on perhaps a rainy day where the daylight hours are quite short and perhaps you know we just kind of call this the down season where we're going out for little day walks and that's just about it so how can we make sure we're still keeping fit and active still getting outside because it's absolutely beautiful during the winter especially if you get uh, the timing right with the light and how it comes through so I've got some tips that I pulled together for you and that's what we're going to be talking about today so to kick it all off, I wanted to start or sort of break it down into pre going outside, being outside and a little bit of sort of after being outside. I haven't really got a huge amount there, but um, essentially it is 10 tips, but <laughs> under each sub subject, I've got all sorts of different ideas. I'm going to throw a lot at you. So I would suggest you watch this through a number of times. Uh, it's just lots of things that I do or that I've picked up from other people when I'm out and about on the trail and hopefully it'll just make your life a little bit more comfortable. So before heading out for your walk, obviously planning is super important. So the first thing we're talking about is planning. So before you go out, what route do you wanna do? Is the route that you've chosen uh, avoiding possible hazards such as rivers that might be in full spate, they might be flowing really strongly because you've had a few days of heavy rain. You don't wanna be crossing over those, especially if there's not a bridge. If the bridge is potentially gonna be washed away, have you got a plan B or C and D? It's quite important in winter to make sure you've got lots of different escape routes uh, especially if you are going high up and the weather just changed quite quickly or you have an incident how can you sort yourself out and keep yourself and any other members of the party safe at the same time so just basically trying to avoid hazards again possible places where there might be snow fallen if you're not used to working in snowy conditions if you've not got the equipment for working in snowy conditions um, and then obviously have a think about your route is it feasible to do it in the daylight hours that you've got without sort of really pushing yourself are you wanting to push yourself um, but have have you got sort of an escape plan again if, if everything takes a little bit longer than you expect just making sure you're planning ahead with that route once you've got your route idea it's really helpful to leave your itinerary with somebody else who perhaps isn't coming with you so that uh, if you don't arrive back when you're supposed to be back somebody can follow that up um, of course this is something we should do sort of all throughout the year but winter there's a slightly increased risk of incidents happening especially if you're not used to working in winter conditions or things change quite quickly just being able to look after yourself through those situations is really really important so another thing that's worth mentioning in advance of heading outside is just making sure your skills and abilities are sort of in the basket in case you need them so what i mean by that is things like navigational skills or emergency first aid skills are you able to navigate should the weather come in should the mist come in should you find yourself out in the dark are you able to use a map and compass um, have you got a first aid kit on you that you know how to use have you put it together yourself i always recommend people put first aid kits together themselves because anything in that first aid kit or everything in in that first aid kit you should know how to use not just for your benefit but for the benefit of the community should you stumble upon somebody who needs some emergency assistance uh, whether that's slapping a plaster on them or calling you know the mountain rescue do you know how to do that do you know how to access help in advance of heading outside really really important so making sure you've got an emergency contact list making sure you've got first aid and skills to use your first aid kit making sure you can navigate uh, well given where you're going to be at um, out and about and uh, just making sure you know how to access emergency services should you need to which hopefully you won't another helpful thing to pack is emergency shelters so you might not need to use them but potentially again if you come across a casualty and you need to keep them warm and comfortable emergency shelters can be really great so these can come in sort of bag types or they can come as an actual shelter that a bunch of you get in and you sit inside and it's sort of gosh they really work to hold the heat in they're brilliant so emergency shelters there's something to look at as well to accompany your first aid kit so just coming back to the navigational skills, so what can you do about that if you feel like, okay, yep, I'd like to do some navigational work so I can get comfortable using a map and compass. The first place I'd recommend you start is the National Navigation Award Scheme. So that's based here in the UK. I don't know if it's European, I certainly know it's UK. So they've got bronze, silver, and gold. So there's different skills that you learn as you go up the 
scale the award system so you'll learn about micro navigation you'll learn about uh, navigating in the dark you'll learn about hand railing and pacing and timing and all these exciting things that really are quite rewarding to know how to do uh, when you're out and about even if it's a beautiful clear day like today you can still just sort of practice those skills and keep them keep them uh, in your back pocket should you need them if you want to take that a little bit further with the navigation you could look at things like the mountain training award system so i'm slowly working my way up the mountain training system so you've got your lowland um your lowland leader skills so that'll be sort of you know walking around here somerset dorset sort of lower level then you've got hill and moorland so that'll take you up onto things like exmoor and dartmoor then you've got your mountain leader winter mountain leader and then you've got international mountain leader and then you've got all sorts of rope skills and stuff going on there as well but essentially if you're just looking to do a bit of navigation you could certainly look at your lowland leader or your hill and moorland leader if you want to take that a little bit further mountain leader is pretty good as well so you don't have to do the full assessment a lot of people are like well if i'm going on a ward scheme surely you know that's that's a big commitment because essentially how it works is you've got your um sort of training then you have a consolidation period where you're getting all these mountain days in or hiking days and getting all the skills and then you've got the assessment but if you just want to learn the skills just do the training there's no pressure there uh, so have a look at that and then with regards to outdoor first aid i would strongly recommend you do an outdoor first aid course uh, usually it's about 100 100 something pounds it's two-day course is a certified course and you cover all sorts of different things you cover everything you would cover in an outdoor at Oh, sorry, um, first aid at work course, but then you'd also get all the additional skills that can be applied to an outdoor setting, such as, um, you know, being able to apply bandages for more major traumas. How can you do a log roll should you find a spinal injury? What do you do if you find somebody, uh, you know, in this really remote location? How do you access the emergency services? So it's something to look into, and I really encourage people to do this because, you know, if I find myself injured and I'm not able to help myself, it'd be really helpful to have somebody, you know, come across me who knows what to do in that situation and likewise if I'm out and about obviously I lead walks as well so it's very useful to have but if I find somebody I know how to deal with that situation to stay calm your doctor A, B, C, D and all of that stuff so there we go so that's sort of your planning ahead there then the other thing to think about is what are you going to pack in your pack so there's lots of different things here uh, let's start with clothing okay so depending of course on the weather and we'll talk about weather a bit later you're going to need to dress accordingly but also have spares potentially more spares than you'd have in the summer because of course the weather can change very quickly it can get cold it can get wet it can get pretty miserable so making sure you've got a decent pair of waterproofs so i'm currently sat on my coat but i've got some waterproof trousers in here so making sure you've got waterproofs that are going to protect you uh, ideally in winter you don't want to be using kit that's old and rusty that's potentially going to fail on you you would like to have things that are actually going to work in order to keep you comfortable in the summer there's a little bit of um i don't know like give for if i don't know your waterproof fails you know that the temperature is not going to drop as cold as it potentially would in the winter i mean obviously it depends where you are and what you're doing but the theory is that <laughs> so waterproof super important and then layering layering is also super key so thinking about um start so you, obviously you could have a nice big thick coat but you're going to work up a sweat pretty quickly and more on sweating later as well so it's helpful within the outdoor system to learn about the layering system hoping to make a video on this pretty soon to keep your eye out for that if i've already got it up it'll be up there right now if it's not it's coming your way pretty soon so layering what that means is you have a base layer so a layer super close to your skin that's going to wick away any moisture so certainly not cotton but some kind of synthetic material perhaps merino wool then you'd have a, a sort of mid layer and that could be a jacket uh, or a soft shell or depending again on what you're sort of doing it could just be a jumper or a fleece and then you have an over or an outer layer and that can be another well you can have basically multiple mid layers as many mid layers as you want and then you have your outer which is usually your waterproof your shells that are going to protect you from the wind and protect you from the rains so layering is super helpful so making sure in your bag you've got uh, your layers so in here for example just on a low level day walk i normally carry uh, I'm normally wearing a base layer and a mid layer and then I've got another couple of mid layers so I've got a jumper in there and a, um, a synthetic insulating jacket my Patagonia Nano and then I've got my shells and usually that's enough for me but of course if I'm going higher I generally take more um, more clothing just in case and the same goes for your hats and gloves so you need to protect your extremities that, that those are the places where you lose heat most so your head your fingers and of course your feet 
So making sure you've got a decent hat and you've got gloves. So for me, I like to carry lots of different pairs of gloves. Pretty much always have fingerless gloves on, but I do have Reynolds syndrome. It runs in our family. I've also got some weird arthritis thing going on at the moment as well. So keeping your fingers warm, these kind of defeat the object, uh, but they're just helpful when I'm doing camera stuff. But then having obviously a full glove, so a nice thinner layer, and then having ideally a waterproof layer that can go on top of that. Again, if the rain comes in, you can still keep your fingers nice and warm. Always good as well to have a dry pair of gloves in your bag so you can switch it out should you find yourself, you know, you land up in a bobby and you're going to have lunch there get some warm gear on and that's going to keep your body temperature maintained that's going to keep your morale up super important to keep that morale up so that's our sort of clothing and sort of keeping ourselves warm so another thing to think about is uh what are you going to put in your bag in case you need to use or in case you're in an emergency situation so i mean i pack it all throughout the summer as well but it's just good to have if it's something you're not used to carrying things like a head torch really important again if you find yourself out on a dark day uh, and you know it gets darker quicker than you'd expect head torches super helpful uh, or if you find a cool cave that you want to explore that's why I always have a head torch on me really so head torches super important another thing you might want to pack is things like hand warmers um, so there's sort of like gel packets that you can slip into your gloves or actually a good tip is if you can wedge it somehow sort of in the back of your trousers so basically in your lower spine that sort of hits um a, you know a big a lot of blood flow there so it's going to circulate the heat throughout your body very quickly that's a nice tip if your friend's really cold just be like slap this on your back mate so you really want it in the sort of uh dip bit of your back your lower spine and that's going to help circulate the heat nice and quickly of course just make sure it's not against your skin you don't want to cause a rash or any slight burns there so um hand warmers can be really great and then another thing to keep you warm always a winner with me is a nice warm drink so pack in a flask i've got a flask here here we go <laughs> so a flask of coffee or tea or herbal drink or even just hot water i like to chuck a bit of ginger in there and put some hot water on just sipping on that throughout the day or every time you stop can be really great again maintaining morale and maintaining your body temperature now another thing you're going to want to pack is food even if you're just out for an hour or two it's quite good to have a couple of snacks in your pocket you do burn more calories by trying to maintain your body heat uh, so the colder you get the more calories you're going to be burning <laughs> and of course if you're moving fast to so try to stay warm you're burning off more calories there as well so some nice high quality um, you know high carbohydrate high fat high protein foods really great things like malt loaf always a good winner that's good stuff you can just grab a handful shove it in underneath your balaclava if you've got a balaclava going around you there or a buff but there you go that's another thing for insulation buffs can be really great basically they come up over your mouth uh, or a balaclava of course the full sort of hood just sort of protecting your ears protecting your head as well so back to nutrition things like bananas are really great um, things like good i don't know cereal bars that are full of um, sort of fruits and, and so you can get vegetable cereal bars as well which are pretty cool basically whatever you like that you're going to feel like you want to eat <laughs> um, ideally not something that's going to be super hard if it gets cold so things like chocolate actually I don't eat chocolate but I've heard a lot of people say in the winter they're not a fan of chocolate because it's so solid you have to crunch on it and it hurts your teeth and uses more energy they just want something soft that you can almost suck on so that's something to experiment with is nutrition when you're out and about on the trail take a few different things so you've got all areas covered uh, trail mix is always a winner as well getting your nuts in there uh, but whatever works for you just making sure you've got plenty of food and plenty of drink uh, so that's most of the stuff i think i want to cover before you even head out on the trail so you've done all of that you've left your itinerary you're prepared for any hazards in case you find them you know your route you know how to navigate your route you've got all your kit let's go do, 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 do. okay apparently that's my theme tune music i don't even know what that is right we're outside yay that's the best place to be right <laughs> so we're outside what are we gonna do okay we're out on a tra the trail oh look someone's next to me yep that's it i brought a buddy so it's real nice in the winter to hike with somebody uh, especially if you find yourself just getting out there because you want to keep your body moving and you're not necessarily feeling super inspired having somebody to sort of joke along with can be really good for morale morale is something i keep coming back to because in winter that's generally where it gets knocked the most if you're somebody that doesn't want to go outside because it's looking gray and dull outside it's probably going to find that when you're outside your morale is going to be harder to keep it up so hiking with somebody is a really great tip take a friend along even if you're not going that far it's kind of good fun to spot different things have a conversation and actually just get back to the basics of life having a nice conversation whilst having a walk you can't go wrong there so one thing I've mentioned a couple of times is weather. So obviously checking the weather in advance of heading outside is super helpful, but even when you're outside, it's important to keep an eye on what the skies are doing. So just having a flick through a basic weather um, book can be really helpful. Like you can read the clouds coming in. Okay, clear blue sky, 
nothing at all on the horizon we're probably going to be okay for the next few hours okay we got a few cirrus clouds coming in or i'll oh, flip there's some cumulonimbus over there we better get down from this hill because that looks like a storm coming over and hey emwis is saying so too emwis what's that so emwis is the mountain weather information system so if you are anywhere like snowdonia wales uh, or wales um a lake district or up in scotland or any sort of mountainous area i think they've even got the peak district now so emwis have a look at that uh, and basically it's the mountain weather it sort of gives you the percentage of um cloud coverage on the highest peaks it gives you sort of idea of where the cloud base is going to be so it's really helpful for planning walks because if you see uh, cloud bases of 300 meters today probably don't want to go up to 900 meters because it is going to be pretty nasty up there uh, likely so oh look the wind yep the wind is traveling at 56 miles an hour really don't want to go up there so it's really helpful just to have a look at MWIS um, that usually it's got a couple of days in advance uh, and of course the day as it's happening so check that out and then of course you've got things like BBC weather uh, the Met Office actually heading to their site as well and learning how to we read weather charts can be really helpful because you can see if there's a depression coming in you can look at the uh, the closeness of the isobars to see how windy the conditions are going to be where you're going to be so just having some familiarity with the weather system and of course like I said when you're out and about keeping an eye on the weather super important and then you've got all that gear in your bag so make sure you use it don't skimp on looking after yourself on the trail if it's going to take effort to get your bag off and put some gear on and you don't want to do that tell yourself you need to do that because you want to try and keep your body temperature maintained and you want to look after yourself that being said try not to overdress try not to over sweat so if you find yourself going up a hill and you are sweating uh, make sure you're undoing stuff make sure again you're taking the time to slow down and stop sweating that much because if you are going up and it is a clear day but there is a bit of wind the wind chill is going to seriously chill you so just making sure you're looking after yourself using your clothing well ventilating and uh, you know not getting too cold and not getting too hot so it is a bit of an art but the more you use your equipment the more familiar you get with it and the more you know how to use it to look after yourself so talking of looking after things see that little seamless link there <laughs> technology technology can be a bit fickle in the winter conditions because of the cold and many people find that their batteries drain so one thing i'm still trying to get used to is how to look after my batteries in really cold conditions uh, you know i'm sort of talking negative digits when i'm up high and i want to get those videos but oh great here we go batteries gone again <laughs> get out another one so a real good tip and many of you guys i know have, have heard of this before is basically to take a battery and shove it in an inside pocket so it's close to your body keeping things close to your body as possible that's going to keep them warm and that's going to prevent those batteries from draining then you can whip them out put them in switch the other one in there and all is well Winter can present some fantastic opportunities to get some really beautiful shots. The light in winter can be totally unique. It can really brighten up a landscape and catch your eye. So just make sure you have got some equipment on you to take some shots or take some video, whatever it is you like to do. And usually your phone is sufficient, but it is sometimes quite nice to have, you know, a little camera with you to get those extra good shots. One thing worth mentioning, if you're going in and out from hot and cold conditions, you might find that your lens fogs up and that is such a pain. So just trying to think ahead uh, and hopefully get your cameras to adjust to the conditions and therefore that's going to help to prevent lens fogging but there's so much information online about how to stop your lenses from fogging up so just do a quick google and have a look at that and hopefully you'll be sorted so a couple of other things i just want to mention before we sort of wrap this up is your footwear your feet super important to look after your feet so we talked about extremities with your hands uh, and your head but just making sure perhaps you've got some spare socks and changing those if you need to uh, that can be really really helpful your boots to be fair depending on the conditions you're going to be in you can probably get away with some summer boots if you're keeping it low of course the ground is going to be muddy so using your walking sticks if you need to that's going to be helpful just to keep you upright and help you to keep your core engaged keeping you nice and strong on your feet uh, prodding the ground to see how deep that bog is that's also very helpful um, but yeah walking boots so you might want to look at some uh, boots that potentially have a stronger sole if you are going to be sort of in rockier conditions where it might be slippier so um, these are my summer boots you can see how flexible the soles are but basically the stiffer the soles get the more compatible they are to sort of winter walking you've got b1 b2 b3 as a whole grading system uh, and of course if you're ever going to need to use crampons which we're not talking about today then you're going to need your b whatever i think it's b2 you might be able to use some b1s i think uh crampons anyway so just having a look at different boots uh potentially going to your nearest outdoor store and having a chat with the foot expert there that would be super helpful just get that conversation going if you think you need to so we talked about walking poles there as well just shove them in your bag can be really helpful to have just in case you need them or you know if you need to steady yourself further on on the trail 
So that's pretty much it. I think I've covered all sorts of different things. Um, right now I may, might need to dig into my uh, spare <laughs> gear because I'm getting a little bit chilly. So of course, when you stop looking after yourself, but basically just having fun. That's what all of this stuff is about. It's about keeping you safe and allowing you to enjoy your time outside in the winter. I think it's very easy to make excuses. Oh, it's an overcast day. Oh, it's drizzling, it's raining. But actually you can have a fantastic time out in the winter. Generally the trails are a lot quieter. The wildlife is quite abundant. And it's obviously sometimes a lot more easy to spot as well because everything's out foraging for food because uh, you know it's trying to make the most of some of the daylight so there's lots of things to see lots of places to go just make sure you're looking after yourself and you're having a good time get those shots with a beautiful light and uh, have a laugh with your buddy as well so that's it for me guys i'm sure there's plenty of things i haven't touched on but i've got a lot more videos to make so who knows i'll bring stuff up in the future but if you think there's anything major that i've missed please do pop it in the comments below and hopefully we can get that conversation going but for now happy hiking in the winter until next time Stay wild. <laughs>